Morning, everybody. It's Friday, the 27th of September, and our top story is that more than 100 bishops and archbishops have signed a letter saying that the tone of the Brexit debate has become unacceptable and they are calling for more respect. This intervention follows angry scenes we've seen in the House of Commons after the Supreme Court ruled that the suspension of Parliament was unlawful. Let's talk to our political correspondent, Jonathan Blake, who's in Westminster for us this morning. Jonathan, we've got lots to talk about, haven't we? Meanwhile, it's being claimed this morning there are still significant gaps in the government's no-deal planning in relation to the NHS and to care homes. The National Audit Office praised the Department of Health and Social Care for the enormous amount of work it, that has been done, but said there were still risks involved if the UK left the EU without a deal. Andy Moore sent this report. We're going to be getting some more information on that story from the National Audit Office to ask them how our hospitals, how our care homes could be affected. That's in about an hour's time. Now, a British couple has been jailed for eight years by a Portuguese court for drug smuggling on a cruise ship. Yeah, Roger and Susan Clark, who are both 72, were caught last year while attempting to smuggle nine kilograms of cocaine with a street value of a million pounds. Damien Grammatica sent us this report from Lisbon. The whistleblower whose complaint has led to an impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump is a CIA officer who once worked in the White House, according to US media. It's alleged that Mr Trump pushed the Ukrainian president to investigate Joe Biden, one of the frontrunners, one of the rivals, hoping to challenge him in next year's presidential election. To explain more, Davis Willis uh, reports and its surrounding areas have been plunged into darkness overnight. Being able to look up at the stars when the light, when there is no light pollution. I'd have been, been the one house that forgot right Would in the you? middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, one more story to bring you. Prince Harry is going to retrace the steps of his mother, Princess Diana, today. He's going to walk through a former minefield in Angola. Now, here's a question for you. How do you get a teenager to cooperate with you? If you know, do let me know. Uh, uh, researchers <laughs> at Cardiff University. Oh, it's changing your tactics. Uh, let us know if you think that works for you. Maybe does it work for MPs? That's what we're talking about this morning. Yeah, as well, we're actually talking a lot about language. We're really interested to hear what you think, actually, about the language that's being used and, and also your experiences in parenting. Any tips? I'm sure everyone will be grateful. You're laughing, Holly. Morning. You're smugly over here again, like you. No children, <laughs> teenagers to worry about. Just what? Uh, did you respond me. to a controlling voice? Were you rebellious? My, my mother had a look. She didn't even need oh, yeah, a voice. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah. that Give us that the look. look. Give us the look. Oh, I haven't been able to do it. I don't think you can get the look until, until, you've, had children. until you've had children. Yeah. Just that utter look of both contempt and frustration all summed up in just it, one it's, yeah, fleeting it's, glance. Do you know, we're talking to Norman Jay. It's just reminded me of a moment. We're talking to Norman Jay, the DJ, later. And mm -hmm. I'm sure he mentions in his book the look. The <laughs> we look. all know the we look. We all know it. When you just stop talking. You know, there's you know, antenatal courses. Mums one. and dads go on before the baby. That's uh -huh. actually what you learn. They, they teach them yeah. the look. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nothing about... It's nothing about... <laughs> it's looking after a human. It's just like you go, you have a That's mirror, you do is. the look, then you go. Yeah. <laughs> well... It's been a frustrating time for British athletes, you might imagine. It's been a very long summer. It's very unusual for an event like the World Athletics Championships to take place this late in the year. I think we had the, uh, the Olympics in Sydney that went on until late September. But in terms of this event in Doha, we haven't even had the starting pistol yet and we're already in late September. And bearing in mind, that is not the only thing that athletes have to worry about. It is the blistering heat over there. It's so hot, actually, that the women's marathon will begin just before midnight local time. Local on illegal merchandise. Right. They've been told, no way. Yeah. Like you promised us. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. That's one deported after Brexit. This is according to concerns that have been raised by the charity Age UK. Yes, another aspect of Brexit we're going to look at this morning. Only 16% of pensioners born on the continent have registered so far for settled status here, mainly because most seem to be simply unaware of the process and don't understand the implications of not enrolling. Breakfast, Jane... It's interesting, isn't it, that the uncertainty of what might happen for so many at the moment. So we're all experiencing it, yeah, yeah. We? And it touches so many aspects of life, doesn't it? We'll try to get through as many of them as we can. We'll be talking about the health sector later, actually, care homes and, and stockpiling uh, medicines a little bit later on. It is now 27 minutes past six. It's like sitting next to the talking clock. Uh, we will have uh, more headlines for you in a moment. But first, let's get the news, time, travel and weather. Do you want to do that again? Six, 27 and... We'll go. We're going to have a 15 word. 15 seconds. See you in a second. Talking clock.